Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about whether light is a particle or a wave. Before we get into it, let's go ahead and ask the most important question of the video, which is... Who's excited for physics? Again, I'm so glad to have you here with me today. Let's go ahead and move into our video. Before we talk about whether light is a wave or a particle, let's frame our mindset and discuss what we mean when we say light is a wave or light is a particle. When we discuss light being a wave, we're referring to it as being an electric magnetic wave as we can see over here on the left hand side. That means there's an electric field as we can see in the blue, and that electric field is perpendicular to a magnetic field as we can see in the red. And we also know that changes in one field induces changes in the other as we saw with motors and generators. When we talk about light being a particle, we're talking about photons. Remember that photons are quantized or quantifiable packets of light. And these are massless and they carry energy. So the big question is whether light is a particle or a wave. If light is a wave, then how can it be a particle? And if light is a particle, then how can it be a wave? We'll begin exploring this question by looking at how light interacts with matter. The different ways that light can interact with matter are by interfering with each other, reflecting off a surface, refraction, which is when a particle or wave enters a new medium, and diffraction, which is when a particle or wave hits a barrier or obstacle or an opening. Waves and particles interact differently in these situations, so by examining these situations, we can determine if light behaves more like one or the other. I'll start by reviewing what we should expect to see from a particle or wave in the given situation, whether it be interference, reflection, refraction, or diffraction, and then we'll compare that to what light does in that situation to see which, a particle or a wave, a light behaves more like. Let's start with interference. Remember that interference happens when two particles or waves collide with each other. In the case of a particle, the particles will collide and then bounce off of each other in opposite directions. On the other hand, when a wave collides, they pass through each other and in the moments when they interfere, as you can see over here, we'll see changes in amplitudes of the wave, but once they're past each other, they continue to move with their original shapes and in their original directions. When two lights interfere, we would see two beams of lights and the lights would be more intense in the areas where they overlap. If light behaved like a particle, then this area of overlapping would have tons of collisions as the photons emitted by the light collide with each other. Then what we'd expect to see is these particles bouncing off of each other, moving in opposite directions, and light would be dispersing, scattering, and spreading out in this area. Instead, what we see is that light acts more like a wave. Light passes through each other, and in these areas where they overlap, they are more intense, or we can also say, say that we see a change in the amplitude of that light wave. There is no scattering or spreading out. Instead, the light passes through each other, and they continue in the direction that they are going. Therefore, interference gives us evidence for the wave nature of light, because light behaves more like a wave than it does like a particle. Let's look at reflection next. If a particle reflects off some surface, it'll bounce in one way and then bounce away toward the direction that it came from. Actually, waves reflect in a similar fashion. Here we have a wave hitting a boundary, and when the wave hits the boundary, it actually goes back in the direction that it came from. Let's move on to see how light reflects. When light reflects, we see that the angle of incidence, or the angle at which the light is coming in and hitting a surface, is the same or is equal to the angle of reflection, which is the angle at which light is reflected off the surface. This shows us that reflection provides evidence for both the particle and wave nature of light, because we can expect to see a particle and a wave to reflect in the same way that light is reflecting in this example. So reflection gives us evidence for both natures. So we move on to refraction. Refraction occurs when light moves from one medium to another medium. We're going to look at some analogies to describe how particles would respond to a change in medium by looking at a soccer ball and moving from concrete to mud, and how waves would respond to a change in medium by looking at a car moving from concrete to mud. If a soccer ball, a particle, moves at an angle across concrete and then moves to mud, it is going to have a change in speed, but not a change in direction as it moves from the concrete to the mud. 
particles therefore change speed but they don't change direction as they switch from one medium to the next. If you look at a wave, we're going to use the analogy of a car for this, and when a car moves through concrete and then approaches mud at an angle, when it reaches the mud, there's going to be a point in time when one wheel of the car is going to be in the mud and the other wheels of the car are going to be in the concrete. The wheel of the car in the mud is going to move slower than the wheels of the car in the concrete, which will cause the car to turn. There is not only a change in speed when a car, which represents a wave, moves from concrete to mud, but there's also a change in the direction as well. We say that the wave refracts or bends as it moves from one medium to the next. So let's go ahead and look at light. A classic example of refraction of light is when we look at a straw in a cup of water. We can clearly see that the straw does not appear to go all the way straight. If it was a particle, it would be a straight straw that went all the way through and that's what we would see. But instead, we see over here a split straw that is magnified in the water and on the other end we see a straw that's going in the opposite direction. This is showing us that the light is bending or changing direction so we see an image instead of the actual straw shape. Because the light is bending, it is showing us the wave characteristic of light. So refraction is showing us evidence for the wave nature of light. The last evidence we're going to talk about is diffraction. This is what happens when a wave encounters a barrier or obstacle and it slightly changes direction. When a wave encounters a barrier, it will actually bend around it. They will not continue in a straight line, but instead start to spread out around that barrier. The same thing happens if a wave encounters an opening or a slit. They don't just continue straight through, they'll actually bend and curve and spread out past the opening. We'll be looking at what light does as it goes through one opening, otherwise known as a single slit, or two openings, otherwise known as a double slit. Let's start with a single slit. First, let's talk about what a particle would do if it encounters a single slit. Whatever particles can get through the opening will pass through in a straight line. They will not spread out or bend. Any other particle that is not aimed at the opening will hit the barrier and bounce or reflect straight back. They'll not make it through the slit. The opposite happens with waves. Here's an example of diffraction of a wave using sound waves. If there's a speaker playing music and there is an opening, like if a door is cracked open in your house, you'll be able to hear noise from the speaker here, directly behind the opening, but you'll also be able to hear it if you're behind this barrier here or on this other end because this sound is actually spreading out to the rest of the room. So it doesn't matter where you're located in the room because these sound waves will spread out when they enter that room. On the other hand, the particle, let's say this is like a bouncy ball, it's passing through, the particle will only hit whoever's standing right at the opening. Anyone behind these walls or behind these barriers will not be affected by the particle. Let's look at light through a single slit. Here we have a laser beam that is traveling through a single slit and we see that the light is starting to spread out. It actually spreads out and creates interference patterns that have areas of constructive interference, these bright spots, and destructive interference, these dark spots. If light were a particle, then there would only be one bright spot directly opposite that slit opening. So single slit diffraction provides evidence for the wave nature of light because that light spreads out once it gets past the opening and does not simply give us one bright spot. Let's talk about another situation where there are two openings or a double slit. The particles would not change their behavior at all. Particles that are lined up with the slits will pass straight through, as you can see in this image here, with no bending or spreading out, while the particles that are not lined up with the openings will just bounce or reflect straight back to the direction that they came from. Here, we have an example of a wave traveling through two slits. We see there is this interference pattern on the wall behind the double slits, and we can see that as the crests and troughs of the wave spread out, as they interfere with each other, we can get these areas of bright spots, known as constructive interference, and dark spots, examples of destructive interference, showing then that the wave is not only spreading out, but is interfering like a wave would. Let's see how light behaves when it encounters a double slit. Just like what we saw with the water waves in the previous slide and on the bottom right hand corner here, the light will spread out and these two waves will then interfere with each other creating a pattern of constructive and destructive interference on the board behind it as crests and troughs match up or do not match up. Again, if light was a particle, we would not be getting these patterns of interference which show a spread of light. Instead, we would simply see two bright spots directly opposite each slit. Therefore, 
Both diffraction experiments show that light behaves like a wave because of the spreading out of the waves and the way they create patterns of constructive and destructive interference as those waves interact. So this brings us back to our original question of what is light? Is it a particle or a wave? How does it interact with matter? That's what we use as our evidence. So based off our evidence so far from interference, reflection, refraction, and diffraction, it seems like light is a wave. All evidence is pointing to light being a wave. And that's what scientists thought for years and years and for a very long time until Einstein and some other scientists came along. They finally discovered some other evidence that light could also behave like a particle. And this actually brings us to the quantum realm. We're going to get to the very basics of quantum physics and quantum mechanics to further explore this question when we look at how the photoelectric effect provides evidence for the particle nature of light. As always, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you are doing well. And always remember, this is fine and I can do it. I'll see you in the next video.